Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the case and the appeal process of Robert Sylvester Kelly. So things are kind of wrapping itself up right now. Um, attorney Jennifer Bonjean is filing her rebuttal to um, the motion filed by the government. That should be coming up. And then the final decision upon the sentencing phase, if they're going to wait until the Chicago trial or if they're going to go ahead with the sentencing before the Chicago trial. So those things are coming up as we speak. But now waiting, I would like to continue to enlighten those supporters and fans of Robert Sylvester Kelly, a.k.a. R. Kelly. And I want to talk about, I want to go back in time and I want to relook at the um, interview with two of the most powerful women in the docu-series that created the big situation of child pornography and um, everything on that note regarding R. Kelly. And the two people I'm speaking about is Asriel Clary and Joycelyn Savage. I know you've heard a lot about it, but we're going to break it down and we're going to take it slow. So let's listen to the interview with Gail King on CBS morning when the two of them came out being madly in love with the singer. But here we go. The two women who live with R. Kelly are defending him and their relationship with him in the strongest terms. 21-year-old Azriel Clary and 23-year-old Joycelyn Savage told us they love Kelly while their families claim he has brainwashed them. In an interview you'll see only on CBS This Morning, the two women told us there is nothing inappropriate about their arrangement with the 52-year-old singer. What is your relationship, both of you, with, with, with R. Kelly? We're with him. That's yeah. our relationship. We're with him. Yeah, we that's what it is. <laughs> and we're in a relationship with him. Right. He just said it. Uh -huh. A very strong relationship as both well. Both of you. Yes, yes, most definitely. You know, how do we say this without being inappropriate? Is this a three-way relationship or do you each have a separate relationship with him? How does this work? Well, both I'm of curious. those. Yeah. Both we both those? have our individual relationships with him and right. we all, our family, all together. We have our moments where we sit and watch movies all together. We go to amusement parks all together. I'm not talking about Azrael going to movies and sitting and watching, uh, going to parks. Now, did you see how she just broke her down? right there like oh you're so immature you would think that i'm talking about fun happy relationship concepts when i'm talking about getting to a personal situation between two consenting adults if you're 21 years old you're consenting to be an adult you're expected to pay taxes you're expected to work you're expected to be responsible in society at 21 years of age, you're allowed to drink, you're allowed to buy cigarettes, you're allowed to, you know, go into the doctor's office without your parents' consent. Well, really, you could do that at 16. But um, did you see how she broke her down right there? Um, because that was to get our attention as a society to see that R. Kelly was, in fact, brainwashing them. That's the word she used. So let's keep keep going. I'm talking about is it a, is it a three way sexual relationship? Sexually, between, well, first of all, I'm not of here to talk about my personal life, okay. and I would never share with no one what I do in or outside of the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And as a woman, I'm sure you would not either. Yes. No, I wouldn't. But I but, okay then. But, so she checked her behind, which she needed to be checked, because of the fact that there is no reason why they would other than trying to get them to go down that rabbit hole to say that R. Kelly was, you know, um, actually doing to them what they're trying to convict him of at this point. Because he was at this interview, I don't know if he was yet convicted, but they were trying to paint the picture for the viewers. And that is so sad. And that's the part of media I do not like because of the fact that they can taint our viewpoint, you know, they don't give us an opportunity to, you know, make the decision for ourselves. So let's keep listening. 
Oh, no, yeah. no, you're Next right. Next question. No, you're right. I would not, but this is a very different circumstance. It's and not I a think different it's a circumstance. There are people all over the world who have multiple girlfriends. Okay. It's no different. Just like she said, in Hollywood, every celebrity that is male has had affairs. Not every, but the majority has had affairs, um, considered themselves as playboys, you know, magnified the whole sexuality of this. And the Me Too moment, the Me Too movement is trying to create a moment in time where none of this occurred. And it's not true. You know, you look at Elvis, you look at um, the guy who was dating um, the young woman who was um, the, the Blue Lagoon or something. Ah, I forget her name. She's an actress. She was a young woman. Um, you know, all these women were icon figures to these celebrity men during this time. But now we want to put R. Kelly on this pedestal to knock him down and say that he was the first man to ever date two women. Very, very ironic. Let's go. Friends. Do both of you all believe you're in love with him? Of absolutely. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Of course. Should your no. parents be concerned? No. Why? <clears throat> well, my parents knew where I've always been for four years. They have known. They know that I've been well taken care of. They never thought you were missing, Azrael. They just were wondering if you were okay. Well, my parents have actually came to Chicago and seen me a few times. They've, uh... I've talked to them. They stopped answering my calls. You know what they say? They say that you were are, you are brainwashed. You're, I talked to your dad last night. He says, my daughter is brainwashed and he's very concerned. He said he was here two days ago and you wouldn't even look him in the eye. Okay, I wouldn't look him in the eye because he's a liar. And he's a manipulative liar. I'll tell you why they're concerned, Azurel, because they say she's 17. We found text messages that indicated that she was having sex with R. Kelly when she no. was... Now listen to that. You see how she switched it? She said that, <laughs> wow, did you see how she just switched that? Azrael, at the very beginning of the interview, the commentator stated that Azrael was 21 and Jocelyn Savage was 23. And do you see how they're putting that subliminal message into the mindset of the audience that's listening, saying now that, Oh, you were seven, you're 17 having sex with R. Kelly. But as Riel keeps throwing it back at her, throwing it back at her. But they want us to think in this instance that she is being manipulated by R. Kelly. She's being manipulated. It, this, this is weird. And it stood up in court. 17, is that true? No, that is a lie. That is a lie. I was not having sex with him at 17. Why would they want to lie about you, their daughter? Okay, so <laughs> when I first met Robert, my parents told me to lie about my age. So when I met him, he thought that I was 18. On top of that, when I was 17, my parents were actually making me, trying to get me to take photos with him, take sexual videos with him, all kinds of stuff. Wait, wait, wait. Your parents encouraged you to do sexual videos yes. with R. Kelly? Yes. And they said, because if they ever have to blackmail him, what they're trying to do now, they can use it against him, which is exactly what they're doing. Uh, Joycelyn, I see you nodding a lot with what yes. she's saying. Why are you nodding in agreement with what she's saying? Because everything that she's saying is true um our parents are basically out here just to get money and your parents scamming. you're saying the same as saying well both for saying. our parents both for our parents are basically yeah. out here to trying to get money and scam because they didn't agree on what happened you know with music or wherever it could be and they're just very upset this is the first time hearing to be honest with you that your parents are trying to get money from r kelly okay because your father told a very different story <laughs> yeah to well, me last night yeah, he's, he's the manipulative, he's very manipulative, so he's the one you need to watch out for. But uh, my dad and my mom, they started to send threats to both me and him. They said, oh, I'll put all your naked pictures all over the world. I'm going to ruin you. I'm going to ruin him. If he doesn't send $20,000 to this bank account by Monday, oh, I'm going to put everything out there and then $10,000 after that. You're trying to solicit me like I'm some f***ing hoe. I'm not. I'm your child. Wow. So she just stated it on national TV that her parents are puppet mastering 
um, a paycheck for her and they promoted her. And this was even stated in the um, criminal trial that, you know, this, oh, this is sad. This right here. And we, we definitely heard it. We heard it. I did hear it. However, it's, it's, it's a different feeling knowing now of the conviction and knowing about the sentencing about to take place. This testimony right here is showing me a lot of things that went on and how the corruption of the system took a man down. But yet everything is on recording. Everything is audio and video dialogued. How could this have happened? Please share in the comment box. Child, exactly. Yeah, you sound very angry with your parents. Uh, you sound very angry and very pained. <laughs> Tell me, Ashwa, why you're crying. Tell me. I'm crying because you guys don't know the truth. You guys are believing some facade that our parents are saying. This is all lies for money. And if you can't see that, you're ignorant and you're stupid as because you want to be. All because that's the world we live in. Negativity sells. Exactly. Gossip is what sells. Exactly. Rumors are what sells. Exactly. But Jocelyn and, and Azrael, this is more than gossip. This is more than just rumors. These are decades of allegations against Robert Kelly. We're not here to talk about decades. We're here to talk about what our parents are doing right now. Right. And what they're doing right now is all for money. Right. Now, did you see how she just tried to re-switch that concept? Oh, let's blame it all on R. Kelly. This is, this is decades. But they're talking about right now. They're talking about them personally and how the lies and the manipulation continues to go on after 10 years of allegations, they're not saying, yeah, you know, he was, you know, tried and found not guilty for the decades of manipulative manipulation that he pursued back in 2008. They're not even flying with that. They were really smart. I don't know if R. Kelly was there and it was coached. I don't know, but <laughs> whatever the case is, this was a good interview. This was a very good interview. And I think it was real. I don't believe it was staged. I don't believe that R. Kelly more or less, you know, controlled the, the data that came out of their mouths. He's not, they're not robots. They're grown women. And I tell you what, Azriel is very feisty. So she got down the way she wanted to get down. Let's keep listening. Now, both sets of parents deny ever asking Kelly for money or receiving money from him. You know, as I watched that, uh, that as I was talking to them, because I had talked to the father, there are two very different stories. I'm sure Mr. Clary, if he watches this this morning, his head will explode because he has a very different version of what these young women are saying. And uh, his team had told us that R. Kelly would not be in the room after the interview started. He was b around the corner behind them. They couldn't see him. But at points, at, at points during the conversation, he would call very loudly like that. So they were aware that he was there. He wanted them to know that he, he tried yeah, he, to stop the interview backstage a couple yeah, times. Yeah, a couple of times. He, Laz, who has taken those amazing photos that you've seen, uh, is my makeup artist, who's also a very good photographer, as you also see. R. Kelly came up to him and said, should I stop this interview? Should I stop this interview? He never did. So the girls at some point were certainly aware that he was there. And I, want, I just wanted to say as a mother, get your things, let's go. You are 21, you are 23, and he is 52 years old. And I know many people believe age is just a number. When you're looking at these young women, they parent a, parrot rather a lot of what he is saying. It's, it's ugly to watch, but abuse is ugly. And the manipulation that continues and the, the, the powerlessness and trying to feel powerful and the blame, it's, these are... No, it's a bad situation. I think one day, years from now, they will, everybody will look back on this and just say it's very sad, very tawdry, and just very, very ugly. I hope that what comes of this is that people go to the websites, and we should post yes. them too, that his ex-wife talked about, where you can look at the signs of whether you're in an mm -hmm. abusive relationship mm -hmm. or not, because you'll find out, hey, I'm in eight of these ten, and then you realize, I need help. Yeah, now they do not think they're being abused or manipulated or brainwashed, but again, they're 21 and 23. So here are some of the warning signs of an abuser. I'm going to give you 10 of them. Extreme jealousy. When you can't do something and 
like go to the bathroom with your cell phone um, without having an issue. Um, possessiveness, unpredictability. You know, one minute everything is fine and the next minute there's a whirlwind around you. A bad temper, cruelty to animals, verbal abuse, cursing, um, calling you out your name, extremely controlling behavior, um, what you can wear, what you can't wear, what you can eat, what you can't eat, um, beliefs about roles of women and men in relationships. So if you're a man, you feel that you are the king of the castle, you will be the, um, that is an abusive tendency because of the fact that you know that you've put this woman in a very self, low self-esteem position. Um, forced sex or disregard of their partner's unwillingness to have sex. So that's rape. Um, sabotaging birth control methods or refusing to honor agreed upon methods. So if you're being told that you need to wear a condom and you don't wear a condom and you have sex um, or you take it off at the time right before um, you insert and then this woman um, becomes pregnant, you've you've overstepped boundaries and that is a sexual abuse. Blaming the victim for anything bad that happens. Everything that happens is all their fault. See, this happened because you talked to me and and a certain way and then I had to hit you or that's abusive. Sabotaging or obstruction of the victim's ability to work or attend school. So if you're going to make this woman or this man stop going to school, stop going to work, causing issues at work, that is a sign of domestic abuse. Um, controls all the finances. If you're the one with the paycheck, um, I mean, if you're working and you have to turn your money over to the other person to pay the bills, to take care of the, the bills, and they take all the money and never leave you with anything. Yes, that is um, financial abuse. Abusing other family members, children, or pets, getting loud, getting um, verbally abusive, um, putting the blame on someone else, um, harsh punishments like staying in a child, having to stay in a room for hours and hours and, you know, for no reason, just because you're mad at significant other or something like that. Yeah, that's truthfully um, um, child abuse. Accusations of the victim flirting with other people or having an affair, but yet no one's there. It's just a sign in your mind that, yes, you're having an affair because of the way you're looking at me or something. It's 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 always something. Um, control of what the victim wears or how they act. Demeaning the victim either privately or publicly. Um, you know, doing things that would uh, definitely cause some form of embarrassment. Um, or humiliation of the victim in front of others or just alone in in front of each other. Harassment of the victims at work and also name calling. If you call a person fat and they're 110 pounds and they're anorexic and you're calling them fat, yeah, that is, that's verbal abuse. So for anonymous confidential help available 24-7, call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at one 800 Seven nine nine safe, and I I just wanted to put that out there because I don't want people to believe that I am um, disrespecting those women and men who have been abused and taken advantage of. It's just when someone is saying to you in in your face that this is actually not happening to them. How do you believe them? How do you know? You know, so those are some sign, telltale signs. So let's get to the interview with the mother and the father. One of R. Kelly's living girlfriends say she is trapped in what they call a monstrous situation. Only on CBS This Morning, Alice and Angelo Clary reveal why they are now afraid for their daughter's, Azriel's life. It is their first interview since the scathing Lifetime documentary, Surviving R. Kelly. Azriel Clary met the singer back in 2015. She was 17 at the time. Her parents claim that Kelly promised to help launch her singing career. They say they have learned since then that his real interest in their words was a little more sinister. I spoke with them yesterday about how this all started, and they say that just three days after meeting R. Kelly, their daughter went to a hotel to meet him without their permission. They were furious and went knocking on hotel doors to find her. 
people where she said was, this was an aud audition. audition. Why wouldn't you trust me? Y'all mm -hmm. would think I would put myself in a, a predicament Perfect. and not call y'all if something wasn't right. She's saying you're messing up my chances. Exactly. And that's exactly what she so said. What this she... is my opportunity. This is my big break. Tempers eventually cooled. And the Clarys say they actually developed a professional relationship with R. Kelly over the next few months, even pitching various business deals, all of which he rejected. The Clarys say the singer had his own proposal, let Azriel join him on his tour full time. He flew us into Chicago. We sat with him in his studio. We met with him. And he basically told us, you know, yeah, I'm starting tour. You know, basically, y'all need to make a decision. Asriel had dreams of becoming a singer, according to her parents, who say she dealt with personal struggles, including a suicide attempt following a bad breakup. That was before she met R. Kelly. She eventually gave her parents an ultimatum. She says, if you don't allow me to go, I will try to take my own life again or I will run away. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to. So that right there shows you that Azriel again, has a very strong mind. If she can't get what she wants, which she wanted it desperately. And as you can hear, they said they were going to create, they created a professional relationship with the R&B um, producer that was going to excel Azriel Clary's music. So I believe that um, as we listen, the more I hear what's going on, it was about money. And it was also about that fame that they wanted immediately that R. Kelly was just like, no, I'm not going to give you this right now. You have to earn your place in the music industry. You can't just vibe and come in off my name and make it to the top. And then, you know, another protege now goes out on her own, leaving him behind, and he wasn't having it. That's how, that's what I feel. What are your views? What are yours? Okay, let's keep listening. Or her bluff on it, because I know she just attempted this previously. I'm thinking in my head, she only got three more months. She's going to be 18, so she can do what she wants. And she really carry out this. And then now I'm living with regret for the rest of my life. From the outside looking in, guys, people will still say, you're allowing your 17-year-old daughter, who at the time is underage, mm -hmm to go with R. Kelly, the perception is that he preys on underage girls. Did that give you any kind of pause whatsoever? That gave me pause. I mean, it gave me awareness, but you talking about a young lady that's raised by two parents going So you're saying you trusted her? I didn't trust him. What I trusted was I raised my child right. I trust my daughter was will be honest with us. And this was strictly her music. R. Kelly had a platform as big as music could ever give somebody. I didn't see the label stop supporting them. And you told me that you saw him working with other young women. Yes. Right. Last week, Kelly blamed Azriel's parents for their own estrangement. What kind of father, what kind of mother will sell their daughter to a man? Three mm. months before Azriel turned 18, the Clary signed a letter giving their consent for her to go on Kelly's tour and stay with a woman named Valerie Janice Payton. Who is Valerie Payton? It ain't R. Kelly. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not Robert Kelly. But does she work with R. Kelly? It, she posed to work for the label. We found out later on that she works for R. Kelly. But at the yeah, time you did. signed this, you thought she was... He told us it was someone yeah, was affiliated from, with the music label. From sewing. Okay. Right. Correct. So you thought she would be a chaperone Correct. for your daughter. That's what she was supposed to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we found out later there was no truth in that. I think it, in retrospect, many of these parents were too trusting. Michael Avenatti is representing the Clarys. He claims R. Kelly used his celebrity status to manipulate the families and the women. If what you're alleging is true, how is he able to get away with this for this period of time? He surrounded himself with a bunch of people, a bunch of yes men and women, that would provide assurance and comfort to these parents relating to the fact that their daughters were going to be safe. That they're Absolutely untrue. Everyone went and told on R. Kelly immediately after this situation popped off. And you don't think if people that were angry with him at a time would not have came forth and said all this, 
outside of the anger. It's just the jealousy. It's the jealousy, the envy, the fame, the wannabe, the I got to get there, you know, by any means necessary. And Michael Avenatti, I have no respect for him whatsoever. So what he's saying right now, I believe that they put this into the interview just to get viewers to buy into the fact that of what he's saying. So I really don't believe anything Michael Avenatti is saying right here. Daughters were going to be looked after, that all of this was legit, that R. Kelly could be trusted. From people in the inside, some of the other victims that we talked to, they all said that, that the girls have to prove their loyalty to him by any means necessary. <laughs> He's the problem. He don't have a sickness. He made a choice. And this is what you guys fail to realize. It was not just R. Kelly that was doing this. It was, it was not only just him and his handlers and his cohorts and who whatever you want to call him. It was my daughter, it too. It was also our daughter because you have to understand, she was lying and duping us and pulling the wool over our house from the beginning. When you look back on it, what do you think of the mistakes that you made? Do you Let's go there. So now they put it on the daughter. Well, hmm. She was very strong-minded from the beginning. She told them, if you don't do what I want you to do, I'm going to kill myself and I'm going to do this. So she already had control over herself. So no, I don't believe that um, her daughter duped her. You know, I don't believe the daughter, Azrael, duped her parents. No, absolutely not. I believe that her parents is now throwing the shade back on their daughter to prevent themselves from looking at like horrible parents of selling their child to R. Kelly for money. Take any responsibility take for the situation responsibility. that you're in? We, 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 never, we never did not responsibility. I feel like I failed my daughter because yes, I should have saw different signs. I should have saw, saw the change in my baby girl. How do you think this story is going to end with your daughter? How I want to see it end, I want to see my daughter leave. Of course, but how do you, are you concerned about how it could end? Are you? I've heard like a suicide pact, you know. I See, now they're putting fear into the parent's mindset. So they're setting the stage that, oh, R. Kelly is this horrible monster. How is it going to end? And the fear. So Gail King is selling fear to society right now. Why would she ask that question? Why? No, my daughter. A suicide pact? Yes, I've heard all kinds of stuff. So, you know, I. That really, gives me chills. Alice. It should give you chills. It because does. The difference is our daughter had experience with trying to do it. See, everybody else can talk it, but it's nothing like seeing a father coming in the house and seeing your daughter submerged in water, and you have to pick her up and try to get her to the hospital. See, I've been through that. So why everybody else may take this lightly and, oh, they just throwing something out there. It's real life for us. Wow. As you see, they're very concerned. You saw it in Jerika's piece. There was an anonymous call called into a hotline. The Chicago police yesterday, after this interview, the Chicago police went to investigate. They found that everybody was fine. And so for now, it's okay. But they, of course, are very worried. They say they heard that their daughter tried to leave twice and she was brought back twice. Uh, that also concerns them. And as for Valerie Payton, the woman that we mentioned, we've the, the Clary said they've never met her, uh, and CBS News has not been able to confirm what her involvement was with Osriel Clary. So, so here's the thing: if you try to commit suicide twice, then you're doing something totally wrong, and you should give up on it because you're succeeding. You're succeeding in living. You are not. You are not being successful. And killing yourself. So there's a reason why you're not successful in it. So you should just give it up. All right, let's move into another interview that I want to share with you on this situation here. Welcome back to CBS Mornings. We have more of our exclusive interview with R. Kelly survivor, Asriel Clary. A jury convicted Kelly this week of nine charges. Now, five of those related to crimes committed against her, including transporting a minor across state lines to engage in sexual activity. Clary, who is now 23 years old, says Kelly abused her verbally and physically for years. The first time we met her, she was 21 years old and she was still living with R. Kelly. We spoke with her again yesterday. It's her first interview since the trial. Come on in, Azrael. 
Well, you look good. Thank you. So do you. Let me see. I'll just start with this. I'm really glad to see you again because I wasn't sure I'd ever get to talk to you again. Mm. I'm very happy to be here and, and see you again as well. It, it feels like a full circle moment to me. When we first met Azriel Clary in March of 2019, she had been living with R. Kelly for almost five years and was one of his fiercest supporters. <laughs> because you guys don't know the truth. You guys are believing some facade that our parents are saying. This is all lies for money. Clary and another woman, Joycelyn Savage, told us then that they were in a relationship with the embattled R&B singer. But Clary left the apartment she shared with Kelly in Chicago seven months after our interview. I was lost and um, I, would, I felt invisible and, you know, I, I gave someone that control over me mm -hmm. uh, to basically make me do whatever it was that they wanted me to do and act however they wanted me to act. During R. Kelly's trial, she testified that he began sexually abusing her when she was just 17 years old. At the time of the interview with us, were you afraid? Now, she said it, Gail King said it at the beginning of the first interview. She denied it. She felt invisible. So this is her way to become this woman who she wants to be for her music industry and her career because R. Kelly wasn't moving fast enough for her in the music industry to get her where she wanted to be. And if you go to her Instagram page, Azriel Clary's in Instagram page, you're gonna see her selling herself, just like her parents did say that, um, you know, this is, this is <laughs> where they said that they could not trust their daughter because of the way that she may have done, um, how she may have done. Um, whatever she needed to do in order to get to where she was trying to be, you know, and, and Gail King is again, buying into the story to get us as the viewers to see R. Kelly in this horrific light. So let's keep going. When you were sitting there talking to us, I was, he did his interview first. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me. I, I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this. He came in and he told us to be angry and be upset and she's gonna try to do this and you get it. Oh, we told you that. Yes, and and so we were, we came in angry. We so he told in. you be angry. Yes, and um, I was scared because I was like, I don't want the world to see me this way, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm loving, I'm caring, I'm compassionate. Mm -hmm. And um, no one got to see that side of me. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's interesting because your dad called me after and said, that is not my daughter. That is not who she is. That is not how she speaks. That is not what she believes. During the trial, you testified that uh, you said, I was not honest in the interview that you did with us. Yeah. What, what were you not honest about? Everything. Everything. So how do we know she's not being truthful now how do we know that she's telling the truth now wow and this stood up this stood up in court everything yes you you know before that interview um you know he had us practicing every single day practicing what answering questions and if he didn't like our answer he would tell us exactly what to say and how to say it so anytime you mention wow, anything Asriel, yeah i'm just i'm stunned by this <laughs> yeah so, so anytime you mention go. anytime you mention anything about sexual preference we already know to say i'm not here to talk about that because that's what he told us to say every single that's exactly time. what you said first Between of all i'm not you? here to talk about my personal life okay. and i would never share with no one what i do in or outside of the bedroom so when the interview was over and you all go back to his apartment the three of you what is the conversation he was so happy he was happy he was so happy he was like you guys did amazing you know you did so well you carried yourself so well i believe he even like got food and wanted to celebrate that's how happy he was with that interview and I was just there like wow what did he think about how he came across in the interview uh truthfully he think I think he he believed truthfully truthfully I he he ah uh. 
that he had he done he had done well. He he felt like he had really uh, did a made a great reflection of himself and where he was in life and how all these women were lying on him and how all these people were just, you know, out to get him and, you know, that sympathy card that he just loved so much. Did you ever have... If she was able to be staged by R. Kelly, could she possibly be staged now to say what she needs to say to get what she wants in the music industry by, say, CBS or the other affiliates who are connected to her right now because she was feeling invisible. Now she has a spotlight. You know, what do you think about that? Conversations when he wasn't around to say, this is not good, this is not healthy. We got to get the hell out of here. Did you ever have any conversations I like that? I feel like a lot of people tried, but everyone always got beat over it because he was very good at manipulating a situation. So even if he knew or not, he would basically say, he could come in this room right now and he would say, you know, I've already spoken to Joy. She already told me exactly what you guys have been talking about. You have five minutes to be honest or you're going to be thrown around this entire room. <laughs> Everything that we were living in had become very normal. And um, to, I had to break out of that. I had to realize that this is actually abnormal. Yeah, the dysfunction was so prevalent that after a while it did feel normal to you? It did because... Listen to how she coached her just there. Oh, now we're going to say that it's normal. And that's the reason why you couldn't get out, to make R. Kelly look to society as a perpetrator of domestic violence, you know, so she's going to get thrown around this whole room. Really? But her mom and dad said that she could. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Let's keep keep listening. It was not only me. It was other women, other women who were older than me. You know, when I met him at 17, he had four other women. And so these women are all normalizing his actions. And then you have assistants normalizing his actions. And you have workers and security and everyone else that normalizes it. So... You, me being very young at that time, I just learned to normalize it. What do you think anybody could have said or done to help you leave the situation sooner? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. I feel like that is something that I would have had to had woken up from myself, something that I would have had to realize on myself. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize with victims, the more you try to help them, the more it upsets them sometimes, you know. Your interview stands out because you are one of the few who we've heard who defended him so vocally and so adamantly and now ends up testifying against him. Well, your testimony was very key. Mm. Azrael was very key. It was very graphic. It was very painful. Some of it was so graphic the judge wouldn't even allow it to be, re be released. Um, yeah to the public and I'm wondering what it was like for you sitting there uh, looking at him while you're testifying about what your life had been like with him I feel like it was it was very disturbing um, to have to relive those moments and um, I don't know a piece of me was happy because I felt like happy yeah because I felt like this person no longer has control over me you know you 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 don't tell me what to do and what to wear and where to go and how long to be in a room anymore so mm -hmm. I think the fact that you're sitting here today is very brave and very courageous that you would come back and sit down and want people to see yeah who you really are I think it's very important um you know even I have to take accountability for my actions. It's okay to reevaluate your life. It is okay to change your mind. You know, you are never too old to wake up and say, hey, I thought this was good for me, but it's actually not. Yeah. And so I feel like that's why it was important for me to come back here and uh, see you again, because it is okay to change your mind. Mm -hmm. It is okay to apologize and forgive yourself more importantly. And uh, that's really what I had to do. Mark Kelly, as you know, has long denied allegations of sexual misconduct with the underage girls. Where I'm happy to say that uh, Asriel is in therapy. You know, she came to the interview alone, which surprised me. I thought somebody would be with her. She came by herself. When she testified, her therapist was with her in another room. 
and she knows that she still has a lot of work to do. But what happened to her, I was really glad to see her in such a different space because what she's been through, when I say unspeakable things, I won't, I won't go there, only just say at one point feces are involved. Take your mind wherever you want to go. It's that graphic. So there we go again um, with detrimental conversation regarding R. Kelly to, in fact, bring him down at a time where the very person who once stood for him two years later has now denied everything and now she's ready to open herself up and her world up because this is her spotlight. And this is what I feel about Azrael Clary's story. Let's move into the last video that I want to share for today. And um, please leave your comments and leave your points of view as well on this video. Here we go to the next interview. You disrespectful, you're so evil. I'm not evil, baby. I need to protect myself. I need to protect myself. Joy, you were sleeping on me. It's a fight. Oh my God, you're so evil. Oh my God. Real Clary, this in action. I told you the aggressive, strong minded woman that is now showing up because everything is falling apart. So there is no R. Kelly. There is no, there's no direction to what's going to happen. So, of course, when she is giving, when she can't get what she wants, she's going to demand that you give her what she wants or she's getting away. And this is the way that her actions are speaking right now. This was held up in court. This was after, after the convictions, I believe. And I mean, it's just so very sad. I think it was just her way of getting what she wanted. And there was nothing R. Kelly could do for her at that point. So she became that little child having a temper tantrum and now she's telling the whole thing. So she knew that she was a minor, but yet at the very first onset of the interview, she said she was not sleeping with him. This woman cannot be believed, period, point blank. Let's finish. Yeah. Stop, ask, ask. Yeah, where you're going to get to. Okay. Right. Look, I'm going to get out. So here, give her these last little Grammys. Give her these last little bit of Grammys. Stop. Somebody please help her. Please help her get these last two Grammys. These is last two. Give them to her. Give them to her. Give them to her. Right. Sounds like jealousy there. It sounds like I'm going to be, my ego is so jealous of you right now. I just want you to know that I got so much control over myself because she's very intelligent. Azriel is extremely intelligent. I'm going to show you that I can control myself because I'm sitting here looking like a fool right now on a live channel. Do you want the police call? Do you want to press charges? What do you want to I do want to press charges. Please call the police. I do. Because every time she came to me, every time she came to me, all of these people are my witness. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. with the wrong one because look I'm 22 but I'm smart you play checkers I'm playing chess no. that's everything 
you can go. See how she moved from one area to another area. And she's telling herself her ego is playing so many mind games with her right now. She's like, mm -hmm, I got him. I know exactly what I'm doing. This should play a big part in the reduction of sentence in this appeal case with Robert Sylvester Kelly regarding Azriel Clary. Oh, you can go. Look, y'all. You girl is good. Look, I'm, I'm good, baby. I'm good. Sitting over here chilling. Look, I ain't the one that's going to jail. Now, y'all got it live, baby. Look, the skeletons is coming out. Period. 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 And that is exactly what it is. She does not care. She just said it. She don't even give a F. I don't give a fuck. Excuse my French. Look, y'all, I'm going to be an advocate for women. I just <laughs> apologize. But this girl really came at me with all this, all this hand motion and did not land one single punch at all whatsoever. And truthfully, I don't give a fuck. Do I feel good? I kind of do. I ain't even gonna cap, cause you know what? You know what? Rob has been lying to all of y'all. <laughs> and that's the sad part about it. That is the sad fucking part about it. He been lying to all y'all asses. Mm. That is a woman scorned. Just listen. And he had people like me lying for him. That's why we never watched the documentary. That is exactly why. So we got on Gail King as stupid as can fucking be. Oh, this nigga. <laughs> oh, she's crying again. Get his big these last few Grammys. Give her these last few Grammys before I fucking break them. You better give her these. Emotional roller coasters, guys. Do you see this? His last Grammys before I fucking I break him. Call an attorney. Call the police. Get in the unit now or everyone goes to jail. Call the, I don't give a fuck. You're not saying shit to me. Call the police. Call the police. Call the police. Somebody call the police or I'm turning off this live and I'm calling it my damn self. Call the police. Your phone shit is back. under the sink, your father said. Call the police. Your phone is under the sink, your father said. Oh, it's in her hand. I'm sorry. Call the police. Call the police off of your phone. <laughs> Y'all want some tea, baby? This is it. Tuh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Y'all want some tea? Call the police. Yes. Okay, so Jason Savage, we both live here. She came up here with another young woman named Kimberly. I don't know who she was, but Jason attacked me once in here, again out there, and it was with me. Says you can go ask Trump security. I wanted to get your opinion about Azrael Clary from what you've seen from this, the interviews with Gail King, the interview with um, her, her parents and how it all went down, and then the interview with the argument between Azrael and uh, Jocelyn Savage. I'm not really going to talk too much about Jocelyn, only because it's she, she's all intertwined in this situation here. But what are your views and how do you think this played a role or will play a role in the appeal process that is going to take place um, sentencing, um, the sentencing part of it? Are they going to do some reduction of time on R. Kelly, Robert Sylvester Kelly's convictions because of all of the things that the emotions that were noted and, and seen from the Gail King uh, interview? So let me know what your points of view are. I thank you so much for liking, joining, commenting, and subscribing. I'm so, I'm so blessed that you are here with me to experience this channel and as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.